ministry is hard and burnout is way too common. So how do you prevent yourself from getting to a place where you just want to throw it all down and walk away from this thing that God has called you to do? We're going to talk about that. Hey, it's Dave Dolphin at practicalworshiplog.com, sharing ideas, tips, and practical advice for the everyday worship leader. And whether you are a pastor or you get paid to lead worship at your church or you just simply serve on the team, it is really easy to get burnt out. So let's talk about that. How do you avoid burnout? How do you prevent it? And how do you know you might be going down that path and stop it before it's too late? I think the first thing that we need to do is we need to understand maybe some of the areas where we get hit and where that burnout might be coming from. One being just having realistic expectations about working in a church. I think sometimes we have it made up in our minds that working in a church is like the best place ever because you're doing kingdom-minded, eternally focused things among other Christians. And so every day is going to be fantastic and fabulous. And that's completely not the case. A church is like any other organization or business. It is being run by flawed, failed, sinful people. People who have tempers, people who get selfish, people who stuff their emotions, people who are lazy. And I would actually take it one step further and say working in a church is actually harder than any other organization or business because of the eternal focus, the spiritual warfare. So always make sure that your expectations are realistic, that working in a church isn't any better than working in in another organization or a business. We're not working in heaven. We just happen to be doing kingdom-minded things in a church here on planet earth that still has sin in it. Also too, know what is going on and maybe what day it is. For example, as far as this video, this is coming out right after Easter. We just got through pouring all this energy, all this time, all this emotion. We have laid it out on the stage in what is considered in the church world the Super Bowl of Sundays. But think about any Sunday. All the energy, all the time, all the emotional investment that you put in as a worship leader and you lay that out on the stage on a Sunday, you are completely spent emotionally. And then you get maybe an email that says it was too loud or I didn't like that song or something that you would consider nitpicking. So you're already kind of down emotionally anyway and then you get this jab from the side. Did you know that Monday is actually the biggest day for like pastor depression? There's a company called Vanderblumen that is a staffing firm. They help churches to fill the key positions, the key pastoral roles of their church, like worship pastors and student pastors and things like that. So they're always constantly helping churches, trying to connect them with people that could fill those roles. And I was listening to uh, William Vanderblumen on a podcast one time, and he mentioned that Monday is the biggest day that they receive resumes. Compared to the next three days combined, Monday is bigger where people come off a Sunday, all that investment, all that energy, everything laid on the stage and they get an email, whatever, go into some kind of depression, maybe that on that, you know, just on the road to to being burnt out. And on Monday, they send in that resume. And what Vanderblumen does, they say, you know what? Call me on Tuesday. Let's see how you are on Tuesday. So what day is it? And think about have you emotionally given everything you have and you haven't had a chance to recharge yet? They actually have a really good blog post about beating the day after blues. I'm going to put that in the description below. Also, that podcast that I was listening to is from the Carrie Newhoff podcast. And it's a, a really good conversation about is it time to move on or not? How do you discern that? So all those resources I'm going to put in the description below. So what are some things that you can do to maybe prevent burnout or to avoid it or to maybe do do some things, change some things before it's too late. The first thing I would say is make sure you're within a community of people that build you up. That might be your worship team. Uh, That certainly is going to be your family. Uh, But it might even be networking with other worship pastors, uh, whether on Facebook groups or, you know, if you don't have like a, uh, a weekly coffee or a monthly coffee with other worship pastors in your area, start one. Get around other people that you can maybe vent to, but also that they can encourage you and lift you up when you feel a little bit down. Don't do this alone. I think God can work in all kinds of different ways, but if there's one thing I've noticed being a pastor is that he doesn't necessarily need us, but a lot of times he uses the people around us to do his work, to encourage, to inspire, to lift up. I think that's why the church is so important. So if you don't have that kind of community, go find it. Second is to find a hobby. Find something that you enjoy doing that's kind of apart from the other things that you do nine to five. It could be golf. 
It could be sewing. It could be building something with wood. It could be just going for a walk. For me, it's actually making these videos. I enjoy uh, researching these topics and helping you all. I enjoy video production and seeing something go from, you know, from just some pieces and an idea to a final video that you can watch on YouTube. This recharges me. So find something that recharges you. And let me speak to the ladies for just a second, especially ladies that are moms and wives. Uh, it seems like you guys are the biggest offenders at putting yourself last because we're always trying to pour into our families, into our kids, and they always seem to get the most of us, and then there's nothing left over for you. It is okay, ladies, to find something that you enjoy, whether that is getting your nails done or getting away with uh, some of your other friends. It is okay to spend time. It's actually beneficial, not only to your church family, but to your family, that you recharge you. They benefit from that as well. Three, find a way to intentionally focus on the wins. Here's something that we do in our staff meeting from time to time. We will intentionally say, okay, we're going to talk about wins. Where do you see God moving in your ministry or maybe in a different ministry from your vantage point? Because in ministry, it's really easy to see all the cracks and all the things that are broken and the fact that I can't find a drummer or whatever the case may be, the things that stress you out. And we kind of take for granted the things that are going well and the things that are going right. And so if we focus, focus, focus on all the things that are going wrong, it's really easy to get depressed and to get burnt out. So whether that's in a staff meeting or that's with your, in your community or just in your private time, intentionally take some time to focus on where you see things working. Where is God at work? And help to, re, uh, to rejuvenate and get excited about all the things that are happening around you. And then, yeah, there are some things that are broken that need to be fixed and addressed, but those will come with time. Just continue to, to, to follow after God and those things will fall into place, but don't lose sight of the things that are already happening and the things that God has already accomplished through you and through your church. And finally, I would say make sure you're having a consistent quiet time. Now, you would think that that would be obvious if we're pastors or working in a church. I mean, you shouldn't have to tell me that, but the truth is, is that for a lot of us, again, we are normal, frail, human, sinful people, and we mess up and we struggle with things just like everyone else. We just have a special, unique calling on our lives. That's the only thing that really makes us different. And so uh, if you're not already, make sure you're having that consistent time in the Word. For me, I'm someone that I like to hit the ground running. In fact, today I came in here to do shoot day and I'm hitting the ground running and I haven't yet had my quiet time. I need to make sure whether that's at lunch or tonight that that happens because if you get out of that rhythm and you're not feeding yourself spiritually, well then yeah, your, tank, your tank's going to be low. And if you're someone that teaches on a regular basis, if you're a senior pastor, if you're in youth ministry and you teach there, or you lead a Sunday school class, and you are constantly studying the Bible to prepare for that message, please know that studying and preparing for a message is not the same as having a quiet time. Those need to be different. When you're sitting down to prepare for a message, you are preparing for a message. You're doing research. You need to make sure that you're sitting down and reading your Bible for you and for your time and your personal relationship with Jesus. If you're someone who is uh, struggling with burnout and just wondering what the next step might be, uh, preventing from like a major crash at the end, I am going to recommend this book called Leading on Empty. I'll put a link to it uh, in the description below, both the electronic version and the physical version. But if you feel like you're going down that path before it's too late, make sure you're putting resources and getting the help that you need to prevent that. Well, here at Practical Worship, we love sharing ideas and tips and practical advice for the everyday worship leader with videos just like this one. Sometimes they're just tips and tricks videos. Other times they're on a little bit more serious nature topics like this particular one about dealing with burnout. But every single week we have videos on the YouTube channel on Tuesday. So consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. That way you know when new videos are uploaded. Also, if this was helpful to you, you might know someone that is struggling with this as well. Consider sharing this link out on social media, on Facebook and Twitter and places like that. And for more great practical advice about leading worship, check out practicalworshipblog.com.